the Yas 109 soundbar. Soundbar means it's an all-in-one package. Normally, for instance, if your original track, your surround soundtrack is say 5.1, you'd have five speakers, and the point one being the subwoofer and or LFE channel, a low frequency effects channel. So you'd have a center channel, left and right, and a couple of rears. Soundbar means it's all in one. You don't mess around with separate speakers, and it will or will not come with a separate subwoofer. The Yas 109 does not come with a separate subwoofer. The Yas 209 does. But the Yas 109 does come with a sub out, which means you can actually add a sub of better quality. It will sound better than the packaged subwoofer you'll get if you get the Yas 209. So many people will go for the 109 and add an aftermarket subwoofer. You don't have to. It's got subwoofers in there, but look at the size of it. I mean, it's smaller than a lot of the subwoofers are on their own. So understand the limitations, what you're going to get when you have all in subwoofers in the same package. The real point of this sound bar is to go from your TV, which sounds like this. Evacuate the city. Engage all defenses. And get this man a shield. to a bit more of a home cinema set up with your soundbar. Sound a bit more like this. It's not grade your TV speakers really. It's not going to replace a dedicated home cinema kit. Also, bear in mind when the specs say 5.1 surround sound, it doesn't mean you've got five, six channels, six separate speakers in there. It means it decodes it down to a stereo but pseudo surround. So at the heart, this is a 2.0 zero or 2.1 if you include the two subwoofers system. It's basically a stereo all-in-one speaker setup that can emulate some sort of surround. It is not going to sound like a dedicated home cinema kit. Now, it's 88 centimeters long. It's 34 and a half inches long. It's 13 centimeters wide, which is five and a quarter inches. So you've got two woofers here and you'll notice they'll be firing up if you have this in this particular orientation but you can hang it on a wall it's got fixings here and here for a wall and it will be in that orientation well like that and I'm saying like that because the tweeters are on the front and that's something to bear in mind you've also got the subwoofers you know we're loosely calling them subwoofers down to about 60 hertz, I think, on official specs, which isn't low. You get dedicated home cinema kits, you want me to get down to about 10 to 20 hertz. So this is not going to replace, as I said, a dedicated home cinema kit. It's going to upgrade your TV system. So what can it do? Well, I better, I'll tell you what it can do, and I'll tell you what it can't do. It can decode AC3, AKA Dolby Digital Surround. It can decode DTS, and of course, we'll decode Dolby ProLogic 2, which is a way of upscaling stereo, normal two-channel tracks to 5.1. What it won't do, and bear in mind, is the high definition in the lossless tracks, such as Dolby True HD, Dolby Digital Plus, which is enhanced uh, AC3, DTS HD Master Audio, DTS HD high resolution. It also worth noting because the headlines of this will be get a virtual X, you will get height information. Of course, the buzz in the home cinema world now is Atmos. You get up, up to 128 different speakers <laughs> if you've got some sort of, you know, uh, mega setup because that's how many channels you can have it over Atmos. 
having different height information and different placements. Now, normally you're talking seven separate normal speakers and then your subwoofers and your rears, but about 7.1 normally with Atmos, it means you've got plenty of height information and they're selling Virtual X as having height information. Of course, it's nothing like Atmos. It's still only a stereo soundbar really in, at the end of the day and it can't decode Atmos. And that's something to bear in mind as we move forward and Atmos becomes more and more popular. However, this is all about Virtual X. Virtual X is on the fly decoding of surround soundtracks to give some sort of height information, some sort of feeling that you're getting a more expansive sound stage. And the thing to remember is it's not DTS-X. That's something completely different and that will come alongside one of the Lostus tracks. It won't decode DTS-X. So Virtual X on the fly decoding DTS-X is already hard coded for height information in the surround soundtrack. We had an all singing, all dancing app for the 107 and the 108. The app for this soundbar is appalling. It looks like it's been designed by a 10 year old in the 1980s, to be quite honest. And if you start using the remote while you've got the app fired up, it doesn't even update in real time. You've got to go back and then go forward to see it updating with what you've done on the remote. Uh, it's 3.4 kilos and it does support HDCP 2.3, which is the latest which stands for High Bandwidth Digital Content Protection, which of course we all want to support. We don't want to be copying or ripping off any copyrighted material, do we? I should also mention the other big deal of the 109. It comes with Alexa built in. I'm not personally using it. If you want to use Alexa with this, you're going to have to have the app on your phone to use it. And you can turn off the microphones so it's not listening to you. Uh, why do you use the soundbar if you don't want Alexa on? I will say, if you do use Alexa, rather than have to say Alexa all the time, there is a dedicated button uh, for Alexa here on the remote, which will wake it up. Uh, so mm, that can be quite handy. Some of the controls on the front are touch sensitive. I can turn it on and off straight from here without using the remote. I can change the volume up and down using the soundbar itself. I can change the input from here. I can turn Alexa's mics on and off from there and I can wake up Alexa directly on here. It thinks I'm gonna to talk to it and I'm not. In fact, I'm gonna turn your mic off. We've then got indicators for if you've got it connected to Wi-Fi or you can connect to the ethernet which is on the back. There's a light to tell you if you've got clear audio on. I will get to that later. It's so you can hear vocals more clearly. You then got your surround sound light. In normal surround sound mode, it will be white. And if you've got Virtual X on, it will be blue. Then you've got your net button. If you're on the internet, your Bluetooth light. It does support the latest Bluetooth 5.0 at the time of this video. And then if you're on, and then if you've got the optical in, it'll tell you TV mode, HDMI in, it will light up HDMI, and then your status light at the end. However, a lot of these functions in, in terms of status, it becomes awkward because on the remote, there is an info button, which means when you press that, you get certain information. This is telling me I've got no audio signal, which I already knew, of course, however, if I wanted to know what I was playing, is it DTS, is it Dolby Surround, or is it PCM? You can play PCM 5.1, but you can only do it if you connect directly from your device to the soundbar via HDMI. Then it will do a lossless 5.1. But using pressing the info and then looking at what lights are on, it's quite awkward. It will tell you several things actually, not least what you're playing. It will also tell you ah, whether uh, Dolby Pro Logic is being used, Dolby, Dolby Pro Logic 2. In other words, you've got a stereo track, but you're playing in surround mode is being upscaled to 5.1. It will also tell you if you've got bass extension on. So that's something else I'll get to later. And also the dynamic range setting. So you can have this set by, def by default, 
dynamic range limiting is off, but you can set it to maximum or uh, a normal setting where it won't go, the range between the quietest and the loudest, which can be a problem with neighbors or late at night, you won't suddenly get caught out by going massively louder than the normal track would be. You're limiting the dynamic range. You can do that on the speaker, but again, it's something awkward. It's not a simple press of the button. You've got to turn off and then go through a series of, light, of uh, presses on your remote. I'm talking about the remote, I will quickly tell you. As I said, you've got quick access to changing the input, HDMI, TV, Bluetooth, net. You've got a but dedicated button for clear voice, so you can hear voices more clearly. A dedicated button for your 3D surround, whether it's standard surround or virtual X surround. And then you can change your modes. So it has pseudo modes, which it calls movie, TV, music, sports, game, and stereo. A lot of them you've probably never used. Mostly, I personally use move, movie and TV. And of course, if you just want to listen in stereo, uh, if you've got music, you can either use the music button or, or the stereo. But then they've got the sports and the games, which are a bit uh, gimmicky. You've got your base extension button in there. You've got your info button there, and you've got a mute button there. And of course, your subwoofer has separate controls. You can turn up or down. It goes through eight different steps. The standard mode is zero when it goes plus four, minus four. You can tell on here which mode it's in because I press, if I want to know where the default mode is, which is zero, when, it, when you get two lights, that's the default mode. If I go up now, so that was that's default mode, got two lights together. I'm going up. So I know that's one, two down. There, now I've got two and zero, and then minus one, blah, blah, blah. You can see how it changes. Also, the volume will change, but it will change, I think, on every tenth step. So it's not, oh, it keeps flashing. It can put you off because you keep pressing and nothing happens until you hit another step. I'm not much sure if it's five or ten steps. But you can see it change uh, depending on where you're sitting and the orientation of the soundbar. I want to quickly show you the back before we get on to the whole point. What does it sound like? But just to show you the back here, yeah, you've got your power lead. So you've got your subwoofer out, as I already said. The thing about, I'm not quite sure what the crossover is on this. On the 107, there was a problem. I think the crossover was set to 160 hertz, which is very high. And also, the internal subwoofers kept going, so you've got a problem of doubling up on the bass. So when you get your separate subwoofer to upgrade the sound on this, you have to make sure you have a low pass crossover filter so you can change that crossover a bit lower than you probably would do normally. Normally around 80 hertz, you probably want it a bit lower on this, maybe 60. I think on my 107 I had it 60. You also want to make sure you've obviously got a uh, gain control on that subwoofer so you can uh, you know, match it exact. You've got your network, you, well, your ethernet connection there so you can hardwire it to the internet. Your optical in, labeled TV. Uh, there's a service USB. It says update only, I'm not quite sure. I guess you can download to uh, a USB stick and put the update that way. I don't know, I did it through the app, so that seemed easy enough. And then you've only got two HDMI connectors, one's in, one's out. The out is ARC. ARC is your audio return channel. Uh, so it can talk to your other devices that are all plug in, say, into a TV. It can all be communicated so you have your sound all coming from the soundbar, no matter which device is actually being played, they can all be controlled the same way. But just remember, there is only one input for another HDMI, for, for a HDMI input. Talking of the optical, just to say quickly what, what it comes with, a couple of spacer bars, you do get an optical cable, but you don't get an HDMI cable, which is kind of penny pinching. You do get a mounting template to make mounting it to a wall that much easier. Uh, and a quick start guide. And that's about it. However, you probably want to download the manual. There's a lot of information that is missing from your quick start guide. I should point out, there is no analog input. They've removed the analog input, if that was something that you particularly was thinking about using. They did have that on the old soundbars, not on the new one. It's all about Virtual X, really, if you buy this. And how does that compare then? If you didn't have Virtual X and you were using standard surround mode, how does Virtual X compare to standard surround? <laughs> Thank you.
Virtual X, standard surround sound. Overall, when you switch from standard surround sound to Virtual X, you get a bump in the overall volume. Now, standard surround, slightly more bass without adjusting anything. Minus 35.3, minus 36.7. But overwhelmingly, what you hear is more clarity, a more defined sound with the Virtual X. But it is going louder. Most noticeably, a huge spike around the 8,000 hertz. Minus 42, standard, just above minus 55. That's huge. That's gonna make a huge difference in the sound, not least because you now also have a huge dip between 700 hertz, 8,000 hertz. It's not there on standard surround. There's so much more definition and highs on the Virtual X, you don't even realize you're getting actually a little bit more bass, and that's sub bass, 48 hertz on standard surround. Now, if you normalize them, so overall they are the same volume, of course, then there's an even bigger difference. Standard surround, noticeably a bigger bass, even though overall volumes are the same, because Virtual X has that huge peak, seven to 10,000 hertz. Virtual X does sparkle. There is more shimmer. It is noticeably more pleasing on a very quick listen. And I think that's the key, especially when you haven't adjusted volumes. When you adjust volumes and a bit of a longer listen, you may find Virtual X a bit harsh. If you're wondering, well, maybe that's what the original track looks like. Original track mixed out to stereo is pretty linear. There isn't that huge peak. So actually standard surround is a bit more accurate if you go by that particular measurement. A lot of people do their tests going, Virtual X on, Virtual X off. That flatters Virtual X because it automatically, by the nature of what the process is, processing is doing, goes louder. Goes louder, sounds more dynamic, it's gonna sound more impressive. When you volume match them, the differences are not quite as impressive. In fact, as I'm saying impressive, it's different. You, you're gonna prefer one over the other. Now, I don't think anything really magical happens. The processing, they make it sound quite amazing. It's quite basic, really. Certain sounds are just being emphasized more. Timber kind of, uh, you know, sharp sounds are getting emphasized and they're doing things with the bass where a little bit clever to trick your ears into thinking, you know, there's some bass there that isn't. And how do they do that? Well, every note has harmonics. Every note then plays a little bit further up the frequency scale as it decays. So basically what it seems to do is place some of the harmonics and your brain thinks, oh, there must have been a note there to start with, but it's not there. So a little bit clever, clever but a little gimmicky to me. You're gonna end up with a slightly hollow sound, more sparkly and giving the impression of a larger sound scale on initial listening. Over a long listen, I find it a bit harsh. I find it a bit wearing. You're gonna like it or not? It's gonna be entirely up to you. Does it change the sound? Yes. So, so home cinema really is all about that bass. How does it handle the bass when it doesn't have a separate subwoofer? How does the internal subwoofer sound? And bass extension, how does that differ from using the subwoofer? Here's a little test. Virtual X used in all my bass tests, subwoofer, 
set to zero, base extension off, I turn base extension on. Ooh, not a lot happening. Actually, it looks like I'm actually getting less bass. This is weird. In fact, from 3000 hertz down, I seem to be losing out. Well, that was weird. Turn the subwoofer to four. Ah, now I'm getting a nice bit of extra bass. In fact, from like 200 hertz down, I'm getting significantly more bass. As you would hope, sticking the subwoofer up. It's working as intended. I'm getting 4 dB more at 50 hertz. It's going to be even better if I turn bass extension on, right? No, it's not better at all. I'm still losing out. Well, I may be gaining at 60 hertz and that's it. This is really weird. Decided to redo my test, this time using standard surround mode. The actual subwoofer, you're actually lifting the bass from quite high, 300 hertz down and up to a four decibel lift. But yeah, you know, it's working on the bass, it's working as you would expect a subwoofer. Bass extension on this test, another matter. Something weird happening. I need to do another bass test, this time in standard mode. <laughs> Standard surround mode, subwoofer, zero, bass extension off, turn bass extension on. This time around, a healthy extra dollar of bass. We've actually got five decibels more at 70 hertz. You can see how big that difference is, pushing that bass right up above the upper bass. And it's working from 300 hertz down. Now, this is what I expected bass extension to do. Extend the bass. So, is Virtual X not working with bass extension or something? Turn Virtual X on. Everything gets louder, as we know. You get a massive 8,000 hertz peak, as we know. You get a big dip, as we know. What you don't get is all that bass extension. Now, it's going louder and you are getting more bass, but simply going from bass extension on standard and then to Virtual X on, you're losing one and a half decibels in that bass, and you, you can see it's not as rounded as just having the standard mode and bass extension on. It's completely altering the bass when you have Virtual X on. So bass extension, basically a waste of time from this test on different tracks with Virtual X. So what I got from that, don't use bass extension with Virtual X. It does not sit well with Virtual X. Virtual X, as I mentioned, is doing things with the bass already. It doesn't sit well. If, you, if, 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 it's, if, it's, if turning on bass extension on is meant to do anything, it doesn't sit well with Virtual X. However, when you're in standard mode, yeah, it does make a big difference. It's not like using the subwoofer. You are reducing some of the very highs and you are getting a boost up to five decibels from 150 hertz. So they do work slightly different. You can use them together. Just not in Virtual X mode is it bass extension gonna make much difference. So, one of the other things is clear audio to make the uh, speech stand out. Obviously, there's no center channel. In a, in a proper home cinema kit, you've got that dedicated, all important center channel, so you don't lose the speech. Well, you don't have that here. So does clear audio help to make the speech stand out without affecting the rest of the track? We were born into a world at war. Between the monsters that destroyed our cities, and the monsters we created to stop them. We thought we had sacrificed enough. But the war we thought we finished is just beginning. 
And the only thing standing in front of the apocalypse is us. But it doesn't matter where you came from, who believed in you and who didn't. This is our time, this is our chance to make a difference. Clear voice off, clear voice on. Nothing really magical in terms of processing going on here. Basically, we're getting a three decibel lift from about 500 hertz all the way up to 10,000 hertz. It's actually quite a large range. That surprised me. Nothing magical, basically three decibel lift and they're leaving the bass alone. So, of course, by comparison, it's going to sound clearer because the bass is left as it was. And you can see it down the bottom, 20, 52 hertz, 25.5. 52 hertz, 25.5. It's exactly the same. They've left the bass, and from about 500 hertz onwards, they've given it a 3 decibel lift. Relative to the bass, it's going to be clearer. I'm surprised, actually, though, boosting the voice is as basic as <laughs> adding 3 decibels between quite a large range. You can use this on and off axis. You can hang it on a wall. We could leave it like this on a flat surface. What's the difference? I used to want to save the world. This beautiful place. But the closer you get, the more you see the great darkness within. Stop the war. What war? The war to end all wars. Weapons far deadlier than you can ever imagine. The war can be ours. Whoever you are, you are in more danger than you think. I cannot stand by while innocent lives are lost. Be careful, Diana. Who is this woman? She's my um, secretary, sir. <laughs> She's a very good secretary. It is our sacred duty to defend the world. And it's what I'm going to do. opposed to engaging in a bit of fisticuffs should the occasion arise. So it is a lot clearer, as you would expect, when you've got it face on. However, to me, 
it's a little too harsh. Um, this can edge you know, towards sibilant. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, I prefer it firing up anyway because if you're going to get any high information, <laughs> you want it firing up. Otherwise, you've got nothing firing up. And the whole point of buying this is basically virtual X, but you haven't got anything firing up. So how can it sound like it's got high information? So I personally prefer it like this. Your ears may be different. And if you really need more sharp end, more definition, more clarity, you get it that way around. Should you buy this soundbar? What do I think of it? First of all, I think it's becoming quite dated, this package that they're putting together. It's hanging on uh, the Virtual X headline. It is a big deal that you can use an aftermarket subwoofer. Remember a lot of the Yamaha soundbars will only work with their wireless offerings, their own. Here you can use any, it's got that dedicated subwoofer out. However, you may have heard in those bass tracks, it, there's not, to me, this, this bass, it's not great. It's okay when you've got this set to zero. As soon as you start pushing that bass, it's making all sorts of funny noises. You're getting very noticeable distortion and uh, bass farting noises. Obviously you've got ports on this, you know, and it's quite important how those ports are tuned. Uh, so it's not, I don't think this is, this is an upgrade from your TV speakers. And you know, you're not serious about home cinema. Uh, if you're gonna alpha Z add your own subwoofer, then that's less of an issue. But as a package on its own, I, I, I think it's a bit dated. I, I did like the Yasa 107. They seem to handle the bass. I'm gonna have to do a comparison AB. I haven't listened to them together. But yeah, it, I don't recall hearing that sort of, those sort of noises coming from the bass. That, dis, that obvious distortion, that obvious arting sort of noise. I find this quite harsh, I think, I do hear kind of holes uh, in in the surround sound. Uh, it's not. I'd like it a, a bit warmer. <laughs> Overall, it's not hitting me as being impressive. Not in 2020, when you know three years ago, whatever. When these, I think when the S107 came out, it was a more impressive. But from memory, the S107 sounded warmer anyway. I think it was a nicer package. It was certainly more user friendly. Some of this stuff where you got to turn it off and then set things and then use your info and then oh, what does that mean? Those lights are on. I find that quite awkward. So look, it sounds fine. It sounds fine as an upgrade from your TV speakers. Obviously, depending on what TV you got. Could you do better? Yeah, I, I would hope you could. I would hope you could, even if it's just to get uh, wider support on codecs. So anyway, I hope you got something out of that. If you're thinking of buying this speaker, with this soundbar, I should say, depending on what you're coming from, it may or may not sound impressive to you. If you've only ever heard TV speakers, you're gonna think, oh, that sounds good. It's like being in the movie. If you've heard a decent home cinema kit, you're gonna think, well, it's all right. And you can't really push it. It doesn't go overly loud. It's loud and loud in a small room. Not hugely, on paper, 120 watts, 60 watts the subs, 60 watts the rest. But it, it gets harsh as you push it, so you, you can't really get to those. If you've got the ear for it, you can't really uh, push it to those higher volumes. It's an okay package, in my personal opinion. So I hope you got something out of this, and thank you for watching. UK.